فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم Wherever I try to find my rights from, I won't find it better than, better than Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Because it's full of justice. It is full of justice. And brothers, I want you to, to understand and to comprehend this, which is, justice only comes from when a person... Pay attention. I say this with the understanding of what I'm saying. Justice comes when a person has perceived fully another person's situation. In other words, you can only be fair when you've li lived in that person's shoes. And you know their affairs in its full context. And no one is able to do that except Allah wa Taala. No one is able to live in everybody's situation and know it properly. And there is no one who has lived and there is no one who lives who has perceived our life before and after and whilst. In other words, our observation of everything is qasir, is deficient. So whatever judgment we give, it's only restricted to a period of time and what we saw and what we believe of that time. But that law, every year, every now and then, it has to be tampered and it has to be changed. Because our observation is very weak. That's why we say, Ahkamullahi, the rules of Allah, salihatun li kulli zamanin wa makan. It is good for every time and every place. It never needs to be changed. And that's why it's full of what? Justice and adl. And whenever the creation turn away from the law of Allah and they try to find answers from things other than Allah wa Taala, Allah's legislations, they find pain, they find agony, they find stress, and they suffer. They truly suffer. So Allah wa Taala's law is full of Justice and fairness. The law of Allah. And again, I'm reminding you of what I've previously once said, which is, the one who created you is the one who legislated. And it's impossible that the legislation will go against the creation. The legislation is always in accordance to the, the creation. In other words, it's made for you. It was tailored for you. Whereas every other law you will ever see was only tailored for a group of people and was not tailored for everybody. It was not tailored for everybody. So, Allah wa Taala's speech and words are full of what? Truth. It is full, it's true. There is nothing which is a lie. And it is adil. Adil in what? In its ahkam, its laws, and its regulation rules. Allah's ahkams are what? Awamir and nawahi. Commands, they're full of justice. Prohibitions, things that you can't do, they're full of justice. They are what? They are full of justice. And just to give you an example, that rules don't change for anybody. Our messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, Usama ibn Zaydin came to him. When a woman stole and their, fa their family members came to the Prophet. They came to the Prophet and they said, Usama, the Prophet loves you. He really loves you and he would listen to what you say. This girl who stole, can you speak to the Prophet to let her go? So when Usama said what he had said and asked the Prophet to let her, her go, the Prophet said to Usama, are you going to intercede in a law set by Allah wa ta'ala? Wallahi wa aymullahi, the Prophet said. Wa aymullahi, I swear by Allah. Law sariqat Fatima, if Fatima stole, laqata'atu yada'a wa ka'a hand off. That person was my daughter Fatima, and she stole, I would have cut her hand off. That is adil. That is what? The adala of Islam is that our messenger alayhi salatu wasalam said to a man who came to him and he said to him, Aina Abi, where's my father? The Prophet turned away from him. And the man said, Ya Rasulullah, where's my father? The Prophet turned away from him. The man came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, where is my father? And the Prophet said, Abu Kafir Nar, your father is in the hellfire. The man stood up in sorrow and sadness. And as he was walking, the Prophet called him back. And he said, Inna Abi wa abaka fil nar.
My father and your father are both in the hellfire. There's no double standards. There's no law and the Prophet of Allah so my parents get saved. لا أبدا استأذنت ربي I took permission from my Lord أن أزور قبر أمي if I can go and visit the grave, grave of my mother فأذين لي Allah permitted it for me واستأذنت ربي I took permission for him أن أدعو to me to supplicate to my mother فلم يأذن لي Allah said you can't make dua for her because she's not a believer. That's his own mom and his own dad. He sallallahu alayhi wa said both of them are disbelievers. That shows you that this religion is what? Adl, justice, fairness. And as much as you are closest to the sources, the kitab and the sunnah, the more you're just. And the further you are from the kitab and the sunnah, the less just, just you are. وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا صِدْقًا فِي الْأَخْبَارِ Everything Allah has said is true. Now pay attention. What's the difference between akhbar and ahkam? And that's what the Qur'an consists of. The Qur'an is akhbar and it's ahkam. You open the Qur'an, that's what you're going to find. The difference between the two is akhbar, they can't be abrogated. Ahkam can be abrogated. If a person tells you yesterday, I failed my uh, uh, GCSE, مثلاً. He says, I failed my GCSEs. And a week later he goes to you, I abrogate it, I passed my GCSEs. Huh? That is what? That's a lie. It's either you passed or you failed. What is it? What, which one happened? Does that make sense? But if a person says to you, every single day, you have to give me five pounds. And a week later he goes to you, I've now abrogated the previous... From now onwards, every single day, you have to give me 10 pounds. Can that happen? So, ahkam, they have abrogation. They can be abrogated. As for akbar, news can't be abrogated. They can't be? They can't be abrogated. لا مبدل لكلماتي There is no distortion and changing and alteration that can be put to the words of Allah. <coughs> to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words. وَهُوَ and he Allah تبارك وتعالى is السميع the all here العليم the one who has all knowledge Allah hears everything دبيب النملة السوداء the the ant the black ant ها huh? which is what في صخرة الصماء في ليلة الظلماء under a rock in a pitch black dark Allah can see it and سبحانه وتعالى hear it Allah can see it and he can what a black ant under a rock on a night which is pitch black. Allah Taala can hear and he can and he can see it. Subhanahu wa Taala. He can he can hear and he can see. Subhanahu wa Taala. Rather, Allah knows of that ant before it went into that place. If it was going to go in it, Allah knows if it wasn't to go into that place. What else other places it would have gone into? His knowledge is what? It is, encompasses everything. No one's knowledge, however high they may be, no one's encompassed everything. Imam al-Shafi'i in his kitab, Jumma'ul Ilm. Kitab Jumma'ul Ilm, and it can also be called Jima'ul Ilm. That, Imam al-Shafi'i said he's a liar. The one who claims that he has memorized all the hadith of the Prophet. You can't encompass it. The Quran, yes. But there's no one on the face of this earth. And something like that he said in his Kitab al-Risala. No one has ever, and no one can ever claim I have memorized every single hadith on the face of this earth. As for the Quran, yes. But not the hadith. وَلِذَلِكَ Imam al-Zahabi rahimahullah, he said that any hadith that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah doesn't know is not a hadith. The scholars they said, إلا أن الإحاطة لله إلا أن الإحاطة لله Except encompassing everything is only for Allah. Ibn Taymiyyah can't encompass everything. Yes, he might be that strong. He might be that knowledgeable. He might be that... But he can't encompass everything. Why? وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ Encompassing knowledge in everything is for Allah. هذا صفة من صفاته is a characteristic of his. 
And it's what only he knows, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The shaykh goes on to say, فَأَقْبَارُهُ Everything Allah told us, كُلُّهَا صِدْقٌ It is truth. وَأَحْكَامُهُ كُلُّهَا عَدْلٌ And every ruling he has passed, it is justice. وَبَعْضُهُ يَشْهَدُ بِصِدْقِ بَعْضٍ وَلَا يُنَافِيهِ And part of it testifies to the other part. الله نزل أحسن الحديث كتابا متشابها مثاني تقشعر منه جلود الله The Quran is متشابه متشابه Some of the scholars they said آيات which are محكم and آيات which are متشابه One of the meanings that are in متشابه means Some of the verses will actually It will testify another verse It will testify to it It will expand on it And it will give you the exact same explanation here again so the Quran, وَبَعْضُهُ Some of it, يَشْهَدُ بِصِدْقِ بَعْضٍ وَلَا يُنَافِي The Quran, they support one another. This verse supports this verse. وَلَا يُنَافِيهِ And he doesn't negate it. بَرَاعَةُ الْإِسْتِهِلَالِ بَرَاعَةُ الْإِسْتِهِلَالِ It's as though he's trying to inform us of the topic that he's going to be speaking about. Which is that the Quran, when you look at it, it's not really contradicting. It's actually supporting and it's aiding one another. It's aiding one another. لِأَنَّ آيَاتِي فُصِّلَتْ مِنْ لَدٌ حَكِيمٍ خَبِيرٍ So how is it that the Qur'an supports one another? It affirms whatever this one was saying, this one's affirming it. And they do not contradict or negate one another. How is that? Because لِأَنَّ آيَاتِي فُصِّلَتْ مِنْ لَدٌ حَكِيمٍ خَبِيرٍ Because these verses have been explained. It has been uttered. It has been brought to us from. Who? Hakim, the wise one. Khabir. Khabir is the one who has detailed knowledge. Detailed knowledge. And knows everything. Then the Sheikh says, he brings the ayah, Quran. Why do they not ponder on the Quran? Walaw kana, and if this Quran was min indi ghayri lahi, if this Qur'an was to come from other than Allah, لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ The people would have found in it, the Qur'an, اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا A lot of contradiction. Why don't they ponder on the Qur'an? Here, take the Qur'an, ponder on it, think about it. Sit down and try to bring out all the mistakes you can. Take your time. And just so you know, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ If this Qur'an was from other than Allah, لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا You will find a lot of contradictions in it. And the reason why the Qur'an can't contradict itself and it's impossible for it to contradict itself is because humans when they speak they forget what they said and Allah does not forget. He does not forget what he's just, what he's just said. Are you with me brothers? And Allah Taala's knowledge is connected to what he says. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's impossible. And as we are all aware of, the most basic things in life, we don't have knowledge of. We still affirm them, we don't, we don't even know them. For instance, energy. Till today, scientists don't know what energy is. But we believe it, and we affirm it. But no one till today knows what energy is. That's our ignorance. But however much technology has, it's just that we've been restricted in what we know. Allah's knowledge is not restricted. It is not restricted. And the fact that it's not restricted, contradiction can't come from him. That's why the Sheikh said, Miladun Hakim in Khabir. Khabir. Scientists live on the concept of induction. They only see things, and whatever they have seen, they try to give a ruling based on that. On a restricted matter in which they've seen. They see five dogs, and they say, all dogs are like this. Now it becomes a hukum am. Laysa kadalik. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bihadafiriha. From all corners he knows it. Everything. So when he places something and he gives an answer or a ruling to something, it is a matter that it is jami'un mani'ah. It encompasses everything and it leaves nothing out. But it's like a person who uh, is looking at the puzzle or looking at the jigsaw, yeah? But can't see the whole picture. 
That's how Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is. So ponder on the Quran. Ayyuhal Muslimun. Oh Muslims, here ponder on the Quran. Oh disbelievers, here is the Quran with you. Try to bring contradiction for it. And try to bring mistakes in this Quran. وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Brothers and sisters, this Quran was being said to also kuffar of Quraysh. Who are what? They were fusaha, bulaga, eloquent speakers. The language was theirs. And it was said to them, bring contradiction from it. From whatever angle you like from the language. Whether it be grammar, whether it be balagha, ilm al-bayan, ilm al-badi, ilm al-ma'ani, sarf. Bring a mistake from this Quran. And this Quran shocked them and it amazed them. It shocked them and it amazed them. So inshallah ta'ala, we, we're going to see that. How subhanallah the Quran, ba'dhuhu yashhadu bi sidqi ba'dhin wa la yunafih. How they support one another and how they aid one another. And that they don't negate, do not negate one another. And I've said this before and I want to remind you of this again. The Quran is so powerful that it does not contradict itself in its mantuq as much as it doesn't negate, as much as it doesn't contradict itself in its mafum. What does that mean? The Quran does not contradict itself in what it is saying to you. And it also does not contradict in what can be understood from it. In other words, it's reverse understanding. It also doesn't contradict. The direct speech in which the Quran is saying to you will never go against the mafhum of what the Quran is saying to you. Humans are so weak, the mantuq goes against another mantuq of this, let alone a mafhum. So it's a mu'jiz. It's a miracle, this Quran. It's a living miracle. To proceed. The scholars, they, dis they disagree on where does this Amma Ba'du come from? Who was the first to ever say it? Ala kulli hal, the call which our hearts feels content with and it is probably not based on evidence of why we chose this opinion. But it seems because there's an ayah involved that inshallah we may, may take it this way which is it was Dawood alayhi salam. That Allah, the ayah uh, in which Allah tabarak wa ta'ala gave him uh, faslu, faslu al -khitab. The Faslu al khitab means Amma Ba'du. Some scholars they said that. That Dawood alayhi salam is the first person to say Amma Ba'du. Ala kulli hal, Amma Ba'du is what? Grammatically, Amma Ba'du is naiba. Is a naiba. And inshallah ta'ala, I wish not to expand on it too much because we have so much to go through. Um, but some scholars they say Amma ba'du Amma is na'ibah Wa ba'du is na'ibatun na'ibah And we'll expand on that some more As for the word ba'du We did it in our sharah of Qatrun nada wa ballu sada We did it properly there right When we studied ba'du And qablu And the, the positions that it takes And the aqwal of the nuhat the grammarians We spoke about it In Qatrun nada wa ballu sada Amma ba'du to proceed to proceed everything that was said and everything that we have put forward. فَإِنَّ مُقَيِّدَ هَذِهِ الْحُرُوفِ مُقَيِّدَ means what? First of all, أَمَّا بَعْدُ the jawab of it is what? The answer to it is فَإِنَّ مُقَيِّدَ هَذِهِ الْحُرُوفِ to proceed verily the one. مُقَيِّدَ means what? مُقَيِّدَ means the one who has written this book. Why would he use the word Muqayyid. And what does that word Qayyid mean? It is to restrict something, right? These words were unrestricted. They were all flying all over the place. They were, huh? I came and I restricted them all in one place. And I tied them down in this page. So the word Muqayyid, that's what it means. فَإِنَّ مقيد هذه الحروف, The one who restricted these verses in this place. These huruf, these wordings, these letters. I restricted them all in here. In other words, I authored it. But the Sheikh here, he's talking as though he's talking about somebody. It's like a third person. He said, فَإِنَّ مُقَيِّدَ 
the one who restricted these words. I'm not saying he did it. As though he's using what? Isti'malu dhamir al ghaybah. He's using the pronoun of somebody who's absent. When in reality it is what? Fi hadithi an nafsi. He's talking about himself. And the person who did this is him, himself. But don't worry, he's going to then bring the speech back to himself. He's going to come with al-dhamir al the pronoun of the one who is speaking about himself by saying, وَسَمَّيْتُهُ I called it. I called it. And this, which is known as الْإِلْتِفَاتُ min al ghaybati إِلَى التَّكَلُّمِ Taking a speech from uh, the pronoun which is somebody who is absent to the pronoun of the person who is speaking. In Arabic, this is very well known. And Allah Taala uses that in the Qur'an. Uh, ta'ala, look at ayah 12, Surah Al-Fusilat. وَأَوْحَى فِي كُلِّ سَمَاءٍ أَمْرَهَا وَزَيَّنَّا وَزَيَّنَّا So look at it there, it's the example for it. فَإِنَّ مُقَيِّدَ هَذِهِ الْحُرُوفِ The one who has authored this book, عَفَى اللَّهُ عَنْهُ May Allah forgive him. أَرَادَ هِي إِنْتَنْدِدْ أَنْ يُبَيِّنَا To clarify. فِي هَذِهِ الْرِسَالَةِ In this, this little book, in this little uh, essay, Ma tayassara, what has become easy for him? He wants to explain what has become easy for him. Min awjuhil jam'i bayn al ayati. That which Allah has made easy for him in the ways to combine and to bring between verses. Bayn al ayati verses. Allah made easy for him because he can't do everything. Whatever Allah made easy for him. In the ways, awju is the forms and the ways that al jam'i to bring together. Bain al ayati the verses. Al the verses which are yutawahamu fi hatta'arudu, which contradiction seems seems to be in it. Fil Quran al Adim in the book of Allah. How am I going to write it? Muratiban. In a organized manner, I'm going to write this Ojuhul Jama, these answers to reconcile between these verses. I'm going to write it in order of how the Quran is written. In other words, Surah Al Baqarah, Surah uh, Al Imran, Surah Al Nisa, and etc. I'm going to write it in order. So let's pay attention again. Let's go over it. فَإِنَّ مُقَيِّدَ هَذِهِ الْحُرُوفِ The author of this book عَفَى اللَّهُ عَنْهُ May Allah forgive him. أَرَادَ He intends أَنْ يُبَيِّنَ To clarify فِي هَذِهِ الرِّسَالَةِ In this book of his مَا تَيَسَّرَ Whatever has become easy for him. مِنْ أَوْجُهِ الْجَمْعِ بَيْنَ الْآيَاتِ In the forms or the ways in which the verses can be reconciled between them. Which verses? Alati the verses. Yutawahamu fiha. In which some may think of it. At ta'aruda that they are they are contradicting one another. Fil Quran in the Quran. The verses that are in the Quran. How am I going to write it like it? Muratiban in organized manner. Bihasabi tartibi suwari. And I'm writing it organized. And how the Quran is organized in the Mus'haf. Which is the Quran surahs. The way they are in the Mus'haf is the way I'm going to write it. So I'm going to bring, when you read the Quran like this, what are you going to find? Any verses that, so I'm not going to get surah, uh, within Baqarah, I'm not going to bring a la later verse before another verse. No, it's going to be organized. The surahs are going to be organized and the verses are going to be organized. Good. Also, what is he going to do? يَذْكُرُ الْجَمْعَ بَيْنَ الْآيَتَيْنِ غَالِبًا فِي مَحَلِّ الْأُولَى مِنْهُمَا For instance, if Surah Al-Baqarah, pay attention, but this is very important. If Surah Al-Baqarah has an ayah that seems to be contradicting a surah, an ayah in Surah Al-Qaf, مثلا. Surah Al-Baqarah has a verse that seems to be contradicting a verse in Surah Al-Qaf. Where is he going to bring it? Is he going to bring it in Surah Al-Qaf or is he going to bring it in Surah Al-Baqarah? Surah Al-Baqarah. So the Shaykh said, يَذْكُرُ الْجَمْعَ I'm going to bring the way to reconcile between them 
بَيْنَ الْآيَتَيْنِ The two verses. Which one? The one in Baqarah, Surah Al-Qaf. I'm going to bring them in what? غَالِبًا majority of the times. فِي مَحَلِّ الْأُولَى مِنْهُمَا The first place of the two. And which one is the first one? Baqarah is first. فِي مَحَلِّ الْأُولَى مِنْهُمَا Qaf and Baqarah. Baqarah comes first. So I'm going to bring it there. وَرُبَّمَا And it could happen. رُبَّهَيَ is تَقْلِيل Sometimes it may happen. It's very rare that he does this. وَرُبَّمَا And it may happen. يَذْكُرُ الْجَمْعَ عِنْدَ مَحَلِّ الْأَخِيرَةِ And it's rare that I will mention it in the, the later of the two. Majority of the times he's going to mention it in the what? In Surah Al-Baqarah or مثلا, the early one. But some rare. You see, I think it's only once or he done it. I remember once. Maybe there might be more, we'll see it, inshallah. That he mentions it in the, the later. وَرُبَّمَا And it may even be possible. يَكْتَفِي بِذِكْرِ الْجَمْعِ عِنْدَ الْأُولَى That I suffice myself by just mentioning it in the first of the two. In other words, I won't mention it in Surah Al-Baqarah and then also mention it in Surah Al-Qaf. Sometimes I might just mention it in the beginning, the first one. And whenever I come to the second one, I'll just say, oh, I mentioned it already in Surah Al-Baqarah. Go to it there. وَرُبَّمَا يُحِيلُ عَلَيْهِ عِنْدَ مَحَلِّ الْأَخِيرَةِ And I'm going to, in the second, وَرُبَّمَا is possible, I tell you to go back to, يُحِيلُ I tell you to go back to, عِنْدَ مَحَلِّ الْأَخِيرَةِ huh? To go back to the early one. وَلَا سِيَّمَا Especially, I'll do this. إِذَا كَانَتِ السُّورَةُ لَيْسَ فِيهَا مَا يُتَوَهَّمُ تَعَارُضُهُ إِلَّا تِلْكَ الْآيَةُ Especially, I will do that. If that whole surah, doesn't have an ayah which seems to be contradicting. If it doesn't, and it seems to not have that, then he said, especially those times I do this. فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَتْرُكُ ذِكْرَهَا وَالْإِحَالَةُ عَلَى الْجَمْعِ الْمُتَقَدِّمِ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَتْرُكُ He doesn't leave mentioning and also referencing على الجمع in the reconciliation of the متقدم. وسميته and I called it, he said. دَفْعُ إِهَامِ الضراب. And I called it. This is where he now went back to. ضَمِيرُ الْمُتَكَلِّمِ The speech of the one who's talking. I called it what? دَفْعُ إِهَامِ الضَّرَابِ عَنْ آيَاتِ الْكِتَابِ And we explain what that means. Which means to repel the doubts in the verses of the Qur'an. فَنَقُولُ We will say وَبِاللَّهِ نَسْتَعِينُ In Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala we seek aid and help. وَهُوَ حَسْبُنَا And Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is enough for us. وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ And He is the best to rely on. رَاجِينَ مِنَ اللَّهِ الْكَرِيمُ Hoping from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala أَنْ يَجْعَلَ نِيَّاتَنَا That Allah makes our intentions صَالِحَةً Good. That Allah makes, I hope from Allah, that He makes my intention good. وَعَمَلَنَا كُلَّهُ خَالِصًا لِوَجْهِهِ And that also Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala makes every action of us with sincerity. إِنَّهُ Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is قَرِيبٌ One who is close. مُجِيبٌ One who obeys the dua of the kula. رَحِيمٌ One who is very merciful to his creation. So the Shaykh here is concluding his muqaddimah by saying, I ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to help me because we need his aid. And Allah is enough for me. I don't need anyone after Allah. And he also is hoping from Allah that our intentions are good. That we have good intentions in embarking on learning this. Because the foundation of every action is intention. And if intention is tainted, then that action is not accepted and it is rejected. As the Prophet said, Allah said, uh, Allah wa ta'ala, He said, I am rich. I'm sufficed from anything that I am associated with. Actually, a person associated with, with Allah says, I am sufficed from having to want you the action from you. No, I, I have no need of it. مَنْ أَشْرَكَ مَعِي Anyone who associates partners with me in an action, they do. They do it for me and they also do it for somebody else. تَرَكْتُهُ I leave him. 
wa shirkahu and I also leave that which they associated me with. So for those actions to be accepted from us, intentions have to be perfected. And that the person is learning it for Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And also he said, وَعَمَلَنَا كُلَّهُ خَالِصًا لِوَجْهِهِ الْكَرِيمُ And also that Allah, He makes every action of us, whatever it is, however small it is, that He makes it purely for His sake only. Every action of us, whether it's studying this book, whether it's other actions, that Allah makes it all for, the, for His sake. إِنَّهُ verily Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is قَرِيبٌ He's very close. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ He got it from this ayah. If my slave asks me, for verily I am close. Close in hearing what he has to say. وَلِذَلِكَ The Prophet ﷺ, he saw the companions screaming and their voices were loud. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, اِرْبَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ Have kindness and good towards your own selves. Stop shouting. Why? Because um, لَا تَدْعُونَ أَصَمًّا وَلَا غَائِبًا You're not calling one who is deaf and absent. You are calling Allah tabarak wa ta'ala wa huwa aqrabu ila ihdakum and Allah is closer to any one of you than the riding beast that you're on. He's closer to you in hearing and in knowledge. He's closer to you in hearing and in, in knowledge. So the person knows that Allah is close. If he makes a dua, Allah is here to listen to you. And he's going to give you what you ask for. He mujib. Allah accepts it. Look what he said. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ just ask and I will give it to you. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Allah, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَيِّيٌّ كَرِيمٌ إِذَا رَفَعَ إِلَيْهِ الْعَبْدٌ يَدَهُ لَمْ يَرُوتُ لَمْ يَرُوتُ مَا رِسِفْرَ Allah is shy. Allah is generous. No slave lifts his hands up and asks Allah for something except Allah gives it to him as he asks for. And Allah comes down every last third of the night and he says to his slaves, who needs something and who wants something so I can give him what he wants. قَرِيبٌ He's very close. Mujibun and he obeys the supplication and the calling of his creation. Rahimun, he's also very merciful to his creation. They are sinning day in, day out. And then he still doesn't grab them and he still doesn't destroy them. Well, the ayah says, Lo nasa bima kasabu. If Allah was to hold everybody for what they have done, ma taraka ala zahriha min Nobody will be walking on the face of this earth. If every single person who sinned, and every person who went against the command of Allah was destroyed straight away, this, this earth will not have anybody on it. But he lets it happen. And he lets it be, take place. And not only that, when that slave who's been doing the crime for so many years comes to his senses and he repents, Allah is here to listen to him. And he gets so happy, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lallahu afrahu bi ahadikum. Allah is so happy to the repentance of a slave of his. Then a man... Ala ardin falat, who's in an open land, and he placed his food and his drink on his riding beast, and he had lost his riding beast, and he then got prepared for death to die, and then he finds his riding beast right on top of him. The happiness that this person is in the desert, he had no food, no drink, everything was on there, the beast is gone, he wakes up, he doesn't see it, but now it's back again. The happiness that this person has, Allah is more happier than when you repent to him. He's more happier. Then when you repent to him, he's Rahim, very merciful towards his creation. So inshallah ta'ala, we also ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala an yaj'ala niyatina salihatan. That Allah makes our intentions and our uh, things that we're doing and our actions. وَعَمَلَنَا كُلَّهُ خَالِصًا لِوَجْهِهِ الْكَرِيمُ إِنَّهُ قَرِيبٌ مُجِيبٌ رَحِيمٌ And we will start inshallah ta'ala the book uh, after we pray, inshaAllah ta'ala, uh, subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.